third year. Thank you very much, uh, Rohit. Um, thank you for uh, letting me be a part of your excellent team. I would like to uh, talk a little bit of strabismus surgery with uh, adjustable sutures. And I just want to show you my niece ice skating a few days ago here in Copenhagen. So we still have the winter here. But I'd like to, uh, yeah, the, the screen scope is not relevant to this talk. So being a strabismus surgeon is more or less like being a sportsman. You try to, to, to hit the target all the time. And we have different targets for different kinds of, of strabismus types. And I would like to share six of my patients here in Copenhagen to, to show you how we use uh, um, adjustable sutures. So this is a 70 year old gentleman with a right fourth, he had a right inferior oblique transposition performed. He had a residual 12 PD right hyper. We did a opposite inferior rectus recession. Then he had a small hyperphoria was uh, fine. Then the next uh, patient was very similar, same surgery, same deviation, same uh, surgery again. But this one, this time it didn't really work out. He had a, a residual uh, right hyperphoria of 10 and was diplopic. So we needed to adjust the inferior rectus uh, two millimeters more and now he was fine. So even though we have the same patients, they look the same more or less same age, they don't respond the same way to our surgery. And that's where we find the adjust, uh, adjustable sutures might be an important tool for, to help us. So we know the different types of adjustable sutures. We know the bow tie suture, we know the sliding news technique, and then the group in Boston with David Hunter have, have uh, made this short egg news uh, a popular where you hide the suture under, underneath conjunctiva. So this is how it works. You have the little uh, short tag news blocking or holding the muscle. And when we move the, the short tag news, then we can actually move the muscle also. We like to show our patients this model, um, which shows how the technique is working and it explains them when we want to do the adjustable suture technique in local anesthesia, what's going on is we're moving the knot and we're not doing a, a new operation. So we have been looking at our different uh, groups of patients. We looked uh, some years ago at 96 patients with adjustable sutures and found that only 27 of these, that's a, quote, a fourth maybe, uh, they needed adjustable uh, per adjustment performed. So we use this for the complicated surgeries, but not all of them needs to have the sutures moved. So do we need the adjustable sutures? And if we do, are we able to delay the adjustment? So here's another, another patient. This is a young boy, young man, 21 years old, also right fourth prior uh, right inferior oblique transposition, still diplopic. Uh, he has a deviation on left gaze of 12. We did this, in this case, we resected the left superior rectus with adjustable suture. That made a, a, quite an overcorrection and he was not very happy with this. So what should we do? Should we adjust him now? Well, actually we waited a few days, uh, seven days and looked at him again. And now he was actually autophoric. So it seems that waiting may, may, may change things and um, you may avoid adjustment. So we have been looking at different uh, groups of patients and if uh, we've been looking at what if we delay surgery, will this make us uh, make things work? And another group of patients, this is uh, 250 patients, the 72 of these were complicated. They had adjustable sutures put in. 23 of them were outside target the first day after the surgery, but waiting uh, up to a week, uh, only 17 were out of tar outside target. So uh, a quarter of these were actually moving into the, uh, the desired amount of deviation for, the, for them. And one of the groups where we, we need the adjustment technique is for the, these uh, uh, Duane patients and other disinnovation uh, patients where you know the, the wiring is, is off. And uh, this is the drawing from Hunter's uh, paper of the uh, Hunter technique for Duane type one surgery. You recess the medial rectus, transpose the super rectus in the same eye. And this is one of the patients where we did this. We had a overcorrection after the surgery, 6PD. We uh, adjusted here at the third day, and this is um, 
um, and this took care of the problem. And many of our patients, they ask us, what well, if you leave so much suture material in the eye, how does it look afterwards? And in this patient, this is six weeks after the surgery and the medial rectus was here. And, and you see the, the eyes is quite fine, um, even though we left all the sur surgical material in there. So what about the other uh, patients we need uh, uh, adjustable sutures for? This is one of the difficult groups where you had the brain trauma, maybe the Monty Python foot will come and hit you. And um, if this happens, we have the problem with the, the torsion. And we have the, when you have the excitable torsion from these brain injuries, these are quite difficult to realign. So what should we do here? Well, we could tighten the superior obliques like we do for the Harada Ito's uh, procedure, but before that we do this, we check how tight are the oblique muscles before surgery. So in general anesthesia, we grab the, the muscles, the, the eye uh, on each side, like Guyton exaggerated traction test. We push the eye into the orbit to release the, the tension of the erectile muscles and to put tension on the oblique muscles. And this is how it looks when we do this. This is in general anesthesia, we like to examine the torsion. So we use a Mendes ring to evaluate how many degrees of excitable torsion, how many degrees of incycle torsion. And the problem with this technique, of course, is, is how strong is the surgeon? So if you have a very strong surgeon, you will have larger numbers, but we, we try to do this in a standardized manner and compare our results with, with each other. So if you want to do the Harada Ido surgery, you, where you advance the, the anti fibers of the superior uh, oblique. We know that there's an unwinding after the surgery is performed. So in this uh, table, you see the uh, excyclo torsion. Uh, they are, they have they suffer some excyclo torsion before and the red dot is in prime precision. But then we do uh, the left eye uh, Harada Ido and quite quickly this unwinds and you have the uh, residual excyclo torsion. So we do the other eye and this re, uh, unwinds quite quickly as well. So we try now with these Harada Ido uh, procedures to uh, look, go for a little overcorrection. Then we wait up to a week and then we do the adjustment of the, of the uh, short tech new suture on the conjunctiva. And that's how it looks when you do the adjustment. So you grab the suture, you move the noose and the tendon can be loosened or tightened depending on what the patient needs, how they decide torsion. In other uh, group, groups of patients, we have found that it might be difficult to, to know how much we should change the muscle's length. And in um, a pattern isotropia with a tight superior oblique muscle, we do not have any table to tell us how many millimeters should you um, cut the superior oblique or posterior tenotomy. So um, we decided to make our own um, adjustable suture for this. And we are working now on, on the, uh, we have data for almost 50 patients with this surgical technique. So what we do is we cut the super oblique uh, tendon. We put a chicken suture or a spacer, a and spacer in between. And then we uh, put a short tag noose, a vicral short tag noose and a vicral belt around the super oblique tendon. So this is how it looks real time with a super oblique tendon, it's cut. The other end is here. So you have the short tag noose and the chicken suture or the uh, merselin spacer is, uh, is here in between. We decided to put a belt around the belt around the uh, super oblique and the suture because uh, we are afraid of cheese wiring. The, so the suture shouldn't cheese wire out of this because you only have a knot on this side. Here you only have the short tag noose to hold the muscle and we were afraid of cheese wiring here. So this is the patient from before. Uh, both uh, super obliques were lengthened four millimeters. We uh, thought that would be appropriate. So this is uh, what we did. But we found out um, uh, that waiting a few days, this was not enough to collapse the A pattern. So we uh, uh, changed the four millimeters to six millimeter um, spacer in, in the right eye. And that took care of her, her, her A pattern and collapsed that. So here she is after the surgery and we could uh, go forward for the correction of the ET. So a few years back, I had the pleasure to visit uh, some of you in New Delhi and um, I followed Pradeep Sharma in the 
OR to to work on to see his work on infra oblique surgery um, to put it nasally, which I was very eager to learn. So this is the 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 normal um, uh, way we we move the infra oblique muscle. We know we can put it further forward and to rise it if you, we, we want this to be a depressor. And we also, what I learned from Pradeep and your group in, in New Delhi, which was great, was that if we put this nasally, this is the I've seen from above, this is inferectus, so the infer oblique is now moved from here to nasally. And then we are able to make this uh, muscle work like a depressor and an intorter, and it takes care, care of both torsion and, and the uh, elevation in our adduction, adduction. And interestingly, what we found here is that the anti-elevation syndrome, which you discussed before, the anti-elevation syndrome with this technique is much less than if you put it on the temporal side of the inferior rectus. So this seems quite a safe procedure, but we always put the, the short diagnosis suture in here to be sure we can release the, the muscle if it's too tight and we uh, gain too much uh, correction. So this is the way the muscle uh, works now when you move it here. So uh, doing adjustable sutures, we tried different techniques and we learned that we need a conjunctiva to cover the suture material. So we always try to make a small incision, a fornix or a miss incision on the side of the muscle. We don't usually make a opening at the limbus because then the sutures might pop out. Then we uh, grab the muscle, get it out, put the sutures in, measure how many millimeters we want to move it. And then we check we, what, we get what we want. And then we put the short tags, the short ends on the conning tab and close it up. And by when you want to adjust the, the muscle after a few days, we found that the muscle usually would move with you back and forth when you pull the sutures but what if you wait till the fifth or the seventh day and then you pull the the suture there is a risk that the muscle is actually adherent to the sclera and you might pull the sutures off so then it's necessary to have the muscle hook underneath the muscle to uh, release it from the eye and then you can uh, pull it forward so we use adjustable suture for all the complicated cases where we know there might be an, um, some black box uh, problem evolving where we don't know where we are, we're going. And the sutures we usually do is the resorbable Vicryl or Novacin 6 uh, uh, sutures with a noose. But for the inferior rectus, like uh, Velas mentioned before, um, the Mersillin, the, the inferior rectus might be a tricky one to work on if you do adjustable sutures. So we, we are now have, have abandoned the um, resolve of the sutures and we use the uh, permanent suture, the Mersillin with the Vicronus for the inferior rectus. And for the superior oblique, like you saw, we also use a non absorbable suture with a Vicronus and the belt around this. So we uh, found that if we use the short tag noose technique, many of the patients do not need adjustment. And if we wait uh, up to a week, many of the patients, a quarter of them will actually move into the target by themselves. We also found that children heal quite quickly. So if we want to adjust them, we plan to do adjustment before day five and adults, we can usually wait till seven days because they don't heal so rapidly. And the advantage of the wait and see procedure or the approach, is we have reduced edema, the stretching of the tissue is um, uh, demasked. And also this makes a great flexibility for us, for the doctor and the patient to find a, a time for adjustment, which fits in our busy schedules. So thank you for letting me share some ideas on adjustable sutures and uh, happy Shivai Jayanti holidays in India. Thank you. Thank you, John. That was an excellent